Okay, in this video we'll discuss the fallout of the Colonial Pipeline attack for the OT security community, which really surprised me, probably you as well. Um, it surprised me to an extent where I thought, well, this really warrants another video on the, on the subject. So um, this is about how this incident was received. And as you will know already, um, it certainly is abused for marketing purposes by vendors, but also in the community, we hear a, a lot of experts um, discussing or framing this as an attack on, on OT, which doesn't make any technical sense. Um, and uh, I, I'm going to explain why and why this framing is absolutely counterproductive. So let's go, let's dive right into that. Um, as you will remember, probably from my last video, I stated that this is not an OT attack for a very simple reason. No OT system was compromised. No uh, rogue ladder logic was loaded on PLCs. No um, historian was compromised, or let's just say that the data was encrypted, etc. Uh, no engineering stations were attacked. No network switches were bricked. No gateways and so forth. Nothing of that happened. Um, so why are OT security experts still framing this as an OT attack. Uh, usually when they explain why this would have any relevance for OT security, the argument is, well, you know, this shows a lack of resilience. So the, um, the production process was disrupted. We agree on that, but that still doesn't make it an OT attack. And I, and I can explain you, uh, to you why that is the case, why this is total nonsense. So with this uh, disruption or with this resilience scenario, you are not discussing the automated production process. You are discussing a business process, the business process of producing and selling goods. Okay, that's a different thing than the automated production process. You, you could say this is like, the, the automated production is a sub-process of this overall business process. It involves a couple of other sub-processes. Now, here's the point. Do you really want to die on that hill? Do you want to turn yourself in a um, business continuity expert? And, and I, I uh, strongly suggest you think twice about <laughs> answering because this will get you in very dangerous territory. So let's break this down. Uh, the, the resilience um, uh, issue is a, in respect to business continuity. You, you could even um, make it more concrete. You could say, well, you know, actually now we are talking about overall equipment efficiency. So this is a field in its own right where experts, uh, such as experts for, um, uh, for lean production, they design processes so that, that they not only cannot be disrupted, but that they also run with the highest efficiency possible. And guess what? One of the loss factors that are uh, discussed in, in this realm is availability loss. Well, isn't that a surprise? So what you can learn from OEE or, over, or equipment efficiency is that there are several loss factors that can um, affect the, um, the availability of your production, okay? And uh, one loss factor, for example, would be um, loss of labor or, or lack of labor, right? Uh, so you, you cannot find any engineers who want to work for you. Uh, another loss factor would be lack of materials. I mean, you, you, everything uh, runs fine. Your, your PLCs are up to snuff, etc. Your uh, engineering servers are patched, but you don't have material because some supplier went bankrupt or whatever. Okay, um, another loss factor would be a uh, lack of demand. And uh, I, I vividly remember that situation back in 2008, 2009, during the financial crisis, uh, where um, I was visiting one of the large um, German automakers 
um, because I had a consulting project with them going on and we were um, going through the production halls and everything stood still. You couldn't see any workers, no conveyor belt was moving, it was like a graveyard. I, I can tell you one thing, this is an absolutely sobering sight. You, you don't want to see that because um, just the idea of, of how many millions this cost the company every single hour uh, was, uh, was mind-blowing. So they had to stop production. Um, then equipment could break down and um, again, all, all of those factors, all of these loss factors or availability loss factors had, have nothing to do with OT security because your OT systems are running just fine. You had to deliberately stop them because it wouldn't make any sense to produce. And this is what we have also seen with Colonial. <clears throat> now, the, the only thing, coming back to the, um, um, uh, the, let's just say, destruction of equipment, so uh, mechanical failure or something in that, in that area, that could be a, a potential angle for OT security because as some of you may know you can physically destroy equipment uh, via OT attacks so for example uh, you will probably remember the Aurora attack where uh, it was demonstrated how you can destroy uh, a generator an electrical generator uh, just by desynchronizing it with the power grid another example would be that you can blow up a transformer um, by shorting uh, the um, the uh, ele uh, the electricity and so th there are a couple of scenarios but none of that happened in this case so we are talking about a deliberate shutdown and uh, again I urge you to think twice about the idea to claim responsibility for business continuity or for OEE because um, you know some co-workers management will will soon figure out that you don't have any background in that field. And you will soon figure out that there are others in the company who actually address this issue. And I would almost bet that in the case of Colonial, the ransomware scenario was addressed. I mean, because otherwise, why would they, would they have this ransomware insurance, right? So somebody had thought about that scenario already. And do you really want to argue that you as the OT security expert would have done a better job? I think that's a very weak case. <laughs> so I, I don't want to defend you when making that uh, claim. So better think twice about this, that. And even if you focus um, the whole issue on cyber, right? Yeah, because I mean, uh, there, there is, uh, it is obvious that there was a cyber attack on the IT systems. And I, I really urge you, be careful what you're going after here. If you are eager to claim responsibility for cleaning up the mess or preventing such a mess next time when disaster strikes, you are getting into very dangerous territory. I mean, just Let's get real about this. I would imagine at Colonial Pipeline, what do you think, how, how large is the IT security department? I, I would say substantial, okay? And, and then you come with, let's just say, your, uh, your buddy Joe and, and Frank, because you three, you are forming the OT security team. I mean, let's face it, that's the, re the reality in many organizations, you know, OT security is totally understaffed and IT security has a decent budget. And I would also tend to think that they are doing a good job it's just by looking at the remediation. What did you expect that, that they have their stuff up and running like in 30 minutes? That, that's totally unrealistic. So I strongly believe that, that they did a very good job. And I think it is just hilarious to imagine that you with your uh, probably um, extensive OT security background could actually help these guys. I, I, uh, you know, I'm, I'm just suggesting they might laugh at you. They will not 
treat you like a serious person in the conversation. So uh, better think twice about that idea. And then um, the other thing, why you don't want to get into that territory. It, it goes a little bit further, you know. If you give um, IT or management the idea that, well, this is within their ballpark, like with, with, with the OT security guys. Um, and, and then you um, present the case in a way that, that it is clear well, this is strong, this can strongly be debated. Okay? Then what could happen is that, that the whole thing backfires and next time when you do have problems on the OT side, IT will tell you, come on guys, you're approaching it wrong. I mean, just, just look at what you did and, and what the hackers took advantage of. We are taking over now. <laughs> you, you can go home now. You know, just, uh, just uh, take a vacation, take a hike. That is uh, what you are provoking here. That the IT guys, if, if you present the case in, in that manner, well, we also have a say in this. No, you don't. But, but if you claim that you do, it will also work the other way around next time. And, and I tell you one thing, be prepared that you won't win that fight. <laughs> this is something that we have seen for many years over and over again. IT has the, the deeper pockets and they have the ear of top management, whereas you have to struggle to gain that ear. And, and only every, let's just say, one or two years, you, you're fed, you know, like, like the breadcrumbs, you know, that, that fell from, uh, uh, from IT security's table. So you really don't want to go there. Um, what, what I would suggest to do is, for all you OT security professionals out there, just stop claiming this had anything to do with OT security when it obviously did not. But focus, just be humble and focus on what this means, this whole wave of ransomware that we are seeing now for about two years, okay? What this means for OT, because we haven't seen the real thing so far, thank God, but I'm afraid it's going to come. And when that day comes, you want to be prepared. And I'll tell you what that means in direct language. You know where the crown jewels are? It's not the, the damn, uh, customer databases. They, they can be restored pretty easily. The crown jewels for uh, an industrial company that, that relies on OT for producing goods is in the engineering servers and, and the engineering workstations, etc. It's that total configuration knowledge. It's, and it's about knowledge and not about data. Data can be restored much easier than knowledge because in case where you don't have any useful backups. Well, data, you could uh, restore data from external sources, uh, like your, your banks, your customers, etc. That won't work for your engineering knowledge, for your process knowledge, okay? So uh, you would have to reinvest years and, 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 uh, and a whole lot of expertise that, that is usually considered like the crown jewels of the company in order to restore that knowledge. If you find yourself in a situation where, well, you know, uh, just uh, last weekend, all those files from the engineering servers, including the backup files for, for the last uh, uh, four weeks, they are encrypted. They are, you cannot, can no longer use them. Now, now, what are you going to do, right? And um, that is something that you want to prepare for because that's the 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 real uh, uh, the scenario that um, is going to be an order of magnitude worse than anything that we have seen so far um, uh, in the ransomware area. I mean, hackers who would bother to go down that road they would not sell you the, the uh, decrypted files for 5 million. <laughs> That's ridiculous. They, they would sell it for 50 million tops. Thankfully, they haven't figured out this attack angle so far, okay? Um, so let's just hope 
that they won't figure it out un until you are well prepared to deal with this scenario. I urge you, this is what you should focus on. Forget about the this this crazy talk, you know, with uh, yeah, resilience and, and, the, and the disruption because uh, some business uh, customer databases were uh, were encrypted, etc. That's peanuts against your core responsibility and, and against the um, the uh, uh, predictable scenarios and abuse cases that uh, we are looking at. And uh, if you ask me, I'm, I'm totally uh, convinced that this is going to come. We will see that. Uh, so far, uh, the hackers are just too lazy. I mean, they, uh, apparently they, they do make a living <laughs> from just attacking uh, random companies on, on the business side, etc. But once that they uh, have figured out how much more money there is, uh, with, with this trove of knowledge that you cannot restore within a week. It's going to take you years, or in other words, it's going to bankrupt the company. So you wouldn't sell that for five million. So that is uh, what I um, suggest you to, to consider when putting everything into perspective, like, is this really an OT attack? Uh, how should we handle this? What, uh, which um, insights can we draw from this?